Hey guys, Josh from ThroughMyLens.com. Today we're in Arizona exploring Petrified Forest National Park. Let's go check it out. Petrified Forest National Park is an amazing area located about an hour and a half east of Flagstaff in Northeast Arizona. The park preserves some of the United States' best collections of petrified wood, and here's what I recommend you do if you have a day to explore. You can enter the park two different ways, but I entered from Highway 40 on the north side and then exited out through Highway 180 on the south. After passing the sign, our first stop was at Painted Desert Visitor Center. There's not a lot to see here, but they do have some petrified wood on sale and you can ask the rangers any questions you have about the park and get gas if you need it. From there, we continued on to the first viewpoint you get to. This viewpoint and the rest in this area all provide amazing views of the painted desert, which are the hills as far as you can see in the red, pink, and blue tones. Next, we stopped at the Painted Desert Inn, which is a historic landmark that was built in the early 1900s and that used to be a hotel in the park. The building is now a museum that preserves what it used to look like when the hotel was in use, and it's fun to walk around and see the old dining area, the rooms, and the prices on the menu of what the food used to cost. Don't forget to walk out to the point outside of the inn as it's another great viewing area. From here we made our way around the park road and stopped at a few of the five more viewpoints that are on the northern part of the park. Each of these viewpoints are great quick stops that provide slightly different views into the wilderness area of the Painted Desert. After passing the last viewpoint you will see a small part of the park which is dedicated to Route 66. Route 66 original road went straight through this portion of the park but it's gone now and the vegetation has grown up to cover the roads. You can still see the electrical lines marking where the road would have been though. There's also a small display here with a plaque, information, and an old car. Continuing on, you'll drive for another 5 or so miles with no stops until you pass the train tracks and enter into the middle portion of the park. The first stop in this section is the old Puerco Pueblo. This quarter mile trail has some of the remains of the old Pueblo homes that were built in the 1200 to 1300s. It also has a great collection of petroglyphs, which is one of the things I didn't know about this park, but that I was really excited to see. A quick drive from there brings you to Newspaper Rock, which is one of the most popular areas in the entire park. This overlook looks down on a gigantic rock that has more than 650 petroglyphs, some of which are over 2,000 years old. You really need a good zoom lens or binoculars to see them well since they're pretty far below you, but it's a really impressive sight and one of the best petroglyphs I have ever seen. From here, the drive gets really impressive as you enter the Badlands area of the park and see the famous teepees. I was blown away by how cool these colorful hills were, and we pulled out a few times just to take photos from many different angles. It only gets better from there though as you head into the Blue Mesa, one of the most unique areas in the park. There are a few viewpoints in the Blue Mesa area, but I recommend you take the short one mile hike down into them as you'll be able to appreciate the blue and purple hues of this landscape and get your first real view of the petrified wood. It was a pretty dreary day when we went, but it was still really impressive to see this area and it was probably my favorite spot in the entire park. Petrified wood becomes the main draw for the rest of the park with the first stop being at the Agate Bridge. The Agate Bridge is an 110 foot long petrified log that's been reinforced with concrete to stay in place and it's a super cool quick stop. Next up is another overlook called the Jasper Forest which has a high concentration of petrified wood that you can look out over. It's pretty impressive still but I'm sure it was really amazing in the early 1900s before a lot of the wood was removed. From Jasper Forest, your next stop will be at Crystal Forest, which is the most popular hiking trail in the entire park. This one mile long trail gets you up close with thousands of pieces of petrified wood. I was blown away by how much there was to see and how cool it is to see it in person. The trail just keeps getting better and better as you head further back and see some really large pieces of wood. Give yourself enough time for this trail as you don't want to be rushed and you definitely are going to want to spend some time checking it all out. We're now near the southern entrance of the park, and if you have time, go to the Rainbow Forest Visitor Center which has some great exhibits and information. Also, it's connected to the Giant Logs Trail which has some of the largest petrified logs in the entire park. 
If you're feeling up for it, you can head out on the Long Logs Trail or the Agate House Trail. If you do both of them together, it's about 2.5 miles for the whole trail. The Long Logs Trail leads to another collection of petrified wood, some of which are over 170 feet long, and it's definitely cool to check out. However, continuing on leads you to the main highlight here, which is the Agate House. This seven-room Pueblo house used petrified wood for its construction, and it's really unique to see. I don't know of any other houses that were built with petrified wood, so if you get the chance, definitely check it out. And just like that, after doing this trail, your one day in Petrified Forest National Park is complete. Hopefully you guys enjoyed exploring this park with me. Get out here and check it out. It's a really cool place to explore. Go to ThroughMyLens.com for more, and we'll see you on the next video.